In this clip, we will continue with conditional probabilities. Uh, the question from the last segment is that uh, how to compute probability of an event A given that event B has occurred and use, using the probabilities of some other events. Uh, we know how to do that by just counting the number of uh, possible outcomes uh, that satisfy these uh, um, properties. Um, okay, so if you have if you haven't thought about it for a while, uh, please stop the video and and try to figure this the answer out by yourself first. It's really important that uh, you try to think about this. Because if you can figure out the answer by yourself, you understand a lot more. All right. Okay. So let's see the answer. So now, what is P A given B? Uh, we know that we have a sample space S. Okay. This is a sample space S. And we know that we have two events A and B. This is A, and this is B, say. And we know that, uh, we know that uh, when we when we try to compute this, we know that we only consider the case when B actually occur, right? Uh, occurs. So it means that uh, all these outcomes, the outcomes outside set B can be ignored, right? They are not relevant because we know that B, B occurs. Then uh, these outcome cannot be the out outcome of, these outcomes cannot be the outcome of the experiment. So it is like we, we can just only focus on uh, these outcome inside the set B. So it is like we only have the new sample space, which is B. Okay, this is A, right? So the picture would look like this. So these outcomes, you know, can be ignored. They're not gonna. They're not possible. Okay. Now, what's what's the set A in this case? So uh, set set A can be divided into two subsets. One which are one which is are uh, this part, which cannot be, you know, occur, and the other that belongs to also in set B, right? And this is uh, A intersection B. This part is A intersection B. So now, uh, when the sample space is reduced to B, even A is redu reduced to invent uh, A intersection B. Now, what's the probabilities? of uh, A given B, instead of counting these points, right, they're not, they're not important anymore. So we only count points in, in set B, okay, these are the, only the possibilities, right, and among these possibilities, only the outcomes in this set A intersection B are those that we want. So, uh, we finally get this. So this this is what we we've just done, right? So we we figure out uh, like we we count the number of outcomes inside B, and and the one that we want is is the outcome in this set. All right. So if we do some more algebra, we know that we can just uh, divide this by the size of the sample space, and then uh, this becomes. This part is the probability of uh, a given uh, a intersection B, and this is the the probability that uh, of B, right? So now we we have this uh, formula, nice formula, that talks about uh, uh, the probability of uh, the conditional probability of a given B in terms of normal probabilities, okay? In terms of a intersection B and and probability of B. So this is one of the most important uh, concepts and formula in, in, in probability theory. 
so uh, let's have a quick sh uh, a few quick checks um, right so in this case uh, what's the probability of picking an orange ball given that a ball with alphabet C is peak so there are two events here right so one is this one picking an orange ball another event which is the given part is this so you want to find the, the probability that this event A happens given this event B has occurred right so what's the so if you use this formula then we need to figure out the probability of A and B right intersection B so what's the probability that you pick an orange ball and pick a ball with alphabet C so these are the balls right orange ball with alphabet C so this is 2 over 7 and what's the probability of picking a ball with alphabet C so it's uh, these are the balls so it's 3 over 7 so the answer is uh, 2 over 7 over 3 over 7 so that's 2 over 3 so this is the same calculation but with a more you know uh, uh, the usage of the formula so let's look for at another check uh, so what's the prob probability of picking a black ball given the ball with alphabet B is picked so again there are two events one is this let's call it an event A another is this let's call it this and event B so you want to find the prob probability of A given B so what's the probability that you pick a black ball with an alphabet B so it's this so it's 1 over 7 and what's the probability that pick you pick a ball with alphabet B it's again 1 over 7 so the answer is uh, 1 over 7 over 1 over 7 so that's 1 so if you know that a ball with alphabet B is picked then uh, we, you know that you pick a back black ball right so that's what it means okay so the last one so what's the probability of picking a ball with alphabet A given that a black ball with a vowel is picked so again there are two events picking a ball with alphabet A and another is this black ball with a vowel so let's look at uh, the probability probability of uh, a intersection B so a ball alphabet A and pick a ball with a vowel a black oh so a black ball with a vowel so this this again this this is two events right so it looks like it's a one event it's actually a one e and uh, uh, an event but it it is basically an interse intersection of two events so one which is pick pick a black ball and then pick a black ball pick a ball with a wow so uh, what's this probabilities pick a ball with alphabet A so that's one and a black, black ball and a ball with a wow so it's just this one right this A so it's one over seven and what what is this prob probability picking a black ball so so the black ball is this and the black ball with the wow is only a and e right so it's two right so it's two over seven so you get one over seven over two over seven so that's one half all right so that's that's the example so the last one the last quick check um so now uh, we have a sample space be this and um, so the event a be an event that you pick an even number so a is this to one two picking any of these numbers and B is an ever even that the number is greater than six okay so what is PA PA is uh, so how many numbers we have ten and the size of set a is five so it's five for ten that's one half okay so what's the probability of a given B 
So now we have to figure out, uh, we know probability of A, right? So we have to figure out uh, directly A given B or have to figure out the probability of, of A intersection B. So let's try to do the slow way. So A intersection B. So B is greater than 6, greater than. So these are the set. And then uh, in A intersection B is, is just only this 8 and 10. So it's going to be 2 over 10. And the prob probability of B is uh, what is probability that you pick some, something greater than 6. So you have 10 numbers and you have 4 numbers which are good for you. So it's going to be 4 over 10. And the probability that A given B is thus 2 over 10 over 4 over 10. And that's 1 half. All right. And, and and the nice thing about this example is that uh, this is one half, and this is one half. Okay. F so so what what does it mean for this? Okay. So so let so let's uh, let me pause for a little bit so that you can think about what the meaning of this. So you have probability of a, and you have probability of a given b. And they are equal. What it means? So have you made the guess? I guess. Uh, so let's see. If you need more time, you can just stop the video, right? Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, so so it's unchanged. So if you have for some pair of events A and B. And we find out that these two probabilities are equal. So that means uh, you, the probability of an event A occurring, even given that B has occurred, remains the same, right? So that means uh, even though B, you know, B, whatever B uh, occur or not, the prob probability that you're going to see an event A are, are still the same. So it means that the probability that the fact that B occurs <coughs> does not change the probability that A will occur. And if we, we do some formula, we, we do some calculation, uh, we, 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 we know that it then this this thing implies this. Okay, by just following the, the, the definition of the Conditional probability, you know that this is P of A intersection B over B, right? P of B. And then you multiply everything by P of B. So this imply th this this definition requires that P of B is at least uh, is, is larger than zero. Otherwise, th this will be like undefined. Okay, so you know this. Okay, and, and in this case, uh, we will look further on on this equation but but this uh if this happens we say that an event a and b are independent okay so what does it mean by in independent okay so if you look at this it's like it is like uh you know p a has some probab probability of occurring and after you know that b if b occurs it doesn't change that right so it means like they are not, in some sense, they are not related. So that that's why we say they are independent. So if this is true, then we say, okay, these two events are independent. If they are not independent, we say that they are dependent. So this is clear, right? So let's look at some other example. So now we have two events, A. Let A be an event that you pick an even number. And B be an event that number is greater than 4. So the question is, is A and B independent? So are they independent? Oh, this should be R, sorry. Okay, so the, the only way to figure out is to check check this uh, definition, right? If they are equal or not. Okay, so it's what what's the probability of A? You pick an even number, so it's one half. 
So what's the probability that you pick something greater than 4? So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 over 10. Right. So what is the prob probability of A intersection B? So you pick an even number and has to be larger than 4, right? So 1, 2, 3. So it's 3 over 10. And if you multiply this, you see that this is also 3 over 10, right? So they are equal. So these two events are independent. Now, if I change this to be, uh, say, 5, what would the answer be? So now if this is 5, then uh, this change to 5, right? And this is, uh, again, you, you, you only have three numbers, which is greater than 5 and, and also even number. So it's... This remains the same, but this change to uh, to five over twenty, so that's not uh, equal. So it means that okay, they are not they are not independent. And 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 if you look carefully, so what 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 this actually means, right? It's like if you know it, in the beginning, the probability that you pick an even number is like half half, right? But now you know that a number you pick is greater than 5. Okay, so it's only this. But now, in this case, uh, the number of even number becomes 3 over uh, 5. Right? So, so it's, it's, it's getting higher than 1 half. So knowing that B occurs, change your, somehow change the pro your belief, right, or change the probability that A occurs. So they have to be related somehow, so that's why we call it uh, that they are dependent. Okay, so r let me uh, remind you again that dependent in this uh, doesn't have to be that uh, even B cause, causes even A, right? There's no causal relationship here. They just, you know, if if you know that B appears, then yeah, maybe A is more likely to be up here. Okay. So look at another example. So let's A be an event and you pick a number greater than get greater than three, and B be an event that the number is divisible by three. So are are they independent? Okay. So uh, can you figure that out? Uh, let me wait for a few minutes. Oh, a few seconds, sorry. Alright, so what's the probability of uh, A intersection B? Uh, pick number greater than 3 and also divisible by 3. Uh, so it's 6 and 9, right, greater than 3. So it's 2 over 10, right. Even B is divisible by 3, uh, 1. 2, 3, so it's 3 over 10. And you pick a number greater than 3, so that's, uh, you can't, cannot pick that, so it's uh, 2 thirds, right? So it's 2 over 3, and that's, again, this. So it means that uh, they are independent. If you know that you pick an even a number greater than 3, doesn't help you to doesn't change the probability that the number that number is divisible by three or not, okay? And again, if I change this to be uh, no keep let's keep this, so let's change this to be two, then you can do the math again. Uh, this remains the same basically. Now uh, the probability that you pick a number greater than two change change this to uh, to be. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, change this to be a seven over nine. And now this is not this anymore, right? So, it has lower probability. So, if it, I change this to two, then these two even are, are dependent. Okay. So, the last question is this. Uh, can you prove this fact? with the, the stuff that we learned so far. So if you know that 
a, a given b equals p p b p a right so that prove that this imply this fact so th th this means that uh if if you know that b occurs doesn't change the probability that that a would occur right so this this is the 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 uh, counterpart of that so you know that a occurs and it doesn't change the the probability that b occurs all right so see you in the next clip